Hey guys, welcome back to Gotta Be Geek. In today's video, I wanted to talk about Azure Static Web Apps. And I've gone over them a little bit in the past in a previous video, which was my Microsoft Build 2020 kind of favorites uh, video that I had done. You can check that out and click on the link that I'll have up there for you to click on if you are interested in, in seeing the other things that I like from Microsoft Build. But Azure Static Web Apps was definitely one of the ones I really liked. And I said in that video that I would do a follow-up one talking about my experience and rebuilding my website using that. So that's what I've done. And I mentioned in a previous video that this was coming. So here we are. I'm gonna go over my experience and time that I've spent on and off for the last few weeks rebuilding my website using Azure Static Web Apps. And I'll go over pros, cons, and any extra gotchas that you might wanna know for building your website using Azure Static Web Apps. Let's get into it. I get into the pros of Azure Static Web Apps, the first thing I wanted to do was to welcome anybody that's landing on this channel for the first time, and this is the first video that you're watching of mine. So welcome, my name is Mike, and in these videos I go through different tutorials, talk about dev tools, and just a lot of coding and software engineering related stuff because that is what I love to do. So welcome. If you like the video, make sure you hit that like button down there because it definitely helps me out. And if you really like the video, then hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you get notified when I drop the next video. Now, the first pro that we'll go over in Azure Static Web Apps is going to be that it is free. I mean, that's, that's I think that we're done, right? I mean, we just say free and you should just use it, right? No. <laughs> okay, so other than the fact that it's free, I told you it was free, right? Because, I mean, you just like free stuff right who doesn't want free stuff i mean i like free stuff but anyway the next part is that it comes with serverless api integration so it uses azure functions written in either typescript or javascript however you want it to work and you can create different for, uh, function apis for different things that you need to do you can integrate it with azure's free tier of cosmo db or Cosmos DB, and then you have a data set for whatever data you wanna get, and you can have that retrieve whatever it is you need to retrieve, whatever data you want, and it's still all free end to end. So you get a static website, you get the serverless API with whatever you need it to connect to, and you get Cosmos DB's free tier to store whatever it is you need to store. So you just get this whole awesome package of integration all for free which is really neat. The third and final pro that I'm gonna go over for the Azure Static Web Apps is that the deployment process is relatively simple. While there is a little bit of customization that we'll get into here in a little bit towards the end, the, the deployment process is simple because you just go to the Azure portal, you go to create your Azure Static Web App, and then you can select it to link into your GitHub account, and then select the repository and the branch that you want, plug in a few variables, and then it will commit in the workflow or the, the YAML file for the deployment process so that every time you commit a change to that branch, then it will automatically deploy that for you and it just makes the process relatively simple so you don't have to sit there and figure out all the stuff with the YAML file. It does most of the legwork for you in getting that all set up. Now, getting into the cons of Azure Static Web Apps, the first one that I wanted to go over is that local development can be kind of funky. And so what do I mean by that? Well, as I said earlier, one of the cool things about Azure Static Web Apps is that not only do you get the static site support, but you also get the serverless API support with Azure Functions, which is neat, but trying to develop and debug those locally together can be kind of a weird experience. And it really depends on how you're building your static website. And so the first part is that a lot of people are going to go or gravitate towards either Nuxt.js or Next.js. If you don't know what any of those are, I'll have links for them in the description below. And I may do a future video on creating applications with those if you're interested. I actually chose, well actually I went through both using Next.js and Nuxt.js initially and try using both of those to figure out which one I wanted to land on. Um, it, Next.js uses React and Nuxt.js uses Vue. Both of them are really awesome. My site actually is right now is using Next.js because I think I've just preferred React over Vue for a little while now, but Vue has definitely still got my eye. So I'm still not 100% sold on whether or not I'm going to stick with Next. Uh, I may go to Next, but we'll see. 
um, I might view, you know, if there's any interest, put in the comment section below and I can do kind of a review or tutorials, either or, or both on both Nux and Nux.js in the future if you're interested, but I'm not gonna go over those today. So getting back to the development being kind of funky in a local environment is that depending on what kind of static site generation you're doing or how you're doing your development, the folder structure that you're using can be kind of different. So for Next in particular, you can use the command for uh, like a lot of different development servers. It's like a run dev command that will allow you to have a local server running and serving your files or your content for you. And you'll have hot reloading so you can just save your files and it will automatically reload everything so that you can get live updates. But the example that Azure has is that you would may have some, like their example assumes that you have something really simple, like just a basic index HTML page with some simple content on it. And they use an, an extension called Live Server to be able to render or load your or serve your static content for you. And you can certainly do that, uh, but it's kind of different in that it, you're not gonna get, well, at least in the case of Next.js and Next.js, you're not gonna get the hot reloading kind of aspect that you normally would, because normally if I were developing just the front end part locally, I would be able to you know, edit files, save them, it will rebuild, and that will be shown in the browser. But if you wanna be able to use the live server, which I'll get into why you would need that here shortly, is you would need to generate or export the site and build where it creates all those different static web pages. That way the live server can render it properly. And there's some settings that I'll put up on the here the screen here that you can see. There's one setting in particular, which is the, um, I've forgotten what it is. Let me pull it back up here so I can actually talk about it. Uh, the setting was the uh, live server settings dot root, uh, which allows you to specify the root of a of the which folder the live server is going to serve from. If you don't set this uh, to wherever the index HTML file is, then the way it serves the content can be just doesn't work properly. So you need to make sure to set that. But that wasn't something that was covered in the Microsoft documentation for static web apps. Now the reason that this is kind of weird is or funky is because when you're trying to both run the front end with your hot reloading and using just the dev run where Next.js serves the files for you, and if you're trying to debug the serverless API, which you can just do in VS Code, you can go to your like index file that you would have for your functions, you can hit F5 and it will run the API locally. But the downside is, is that if you use Next.js to serve your files using its local development server, it doesn't understand the route that you need for proxying over to the serverless API. So things don't function correctly. So you'll see here that when I'm doing this on my local one, if I don't use live server and then use live server's proxy settings to host my site and render it, the live server provides the proxy to point extra API requests or filter those over to um, your serverless API, but Next.js doesn't have a way to really do this unless you were to maybe go into their Webpack config and figure out some way to do that. And so unfortunately, there's not an easy out of the box way to do it. Not to say that there isn't, but it's not something that's just relatively simple to do with a couple config options, kind of like live server. So if you want to be able to debug or not necessarily debug but you want to be able to run your static website locally and have it hit your serverless api endpoints to make sure that everything functions correctly you have to use the live server extension because running it with a local development server through something like next.js or next.js or depend unless you you know do something super custom with your own webpack config you're not going to be able to run those together so I've just had to do some graceful error handling on my side when I wanna just debug or test things on the front end, irrespective of the API. And then if I wanna test the API, I usually just do F5 in Visual Studio and then I'll hit the endpoints with Postman to make sure that things are doing what I want them to do. And then I'll sit, you'll, you can use breakpoints and VS Code with your Azure functions. So other than that, I, I think it's not horrible to work around, but I just think that it would be nice if it was a little bit of a cleaner experience to be able to run both of them at the same time without having to use Visual Studio Code's live server extension. So there you go. 
The second kind that I wanted to talk about for Azure Static Web Apps is going to be that there's no root domain support. So what is this and what, is this, what does that mean? So a root domain is also referred to as an Apex domain. And in my website, as an example, you may see www.gottabegeek.com. Well, an Apex or root domain is just that website without the www. So it would be gottabegeek.com. Now, unfortunately, the reason that this is a problem is because when you go to set up a custom domain in Azure Static Web Apps, you cannot use your root or Apex domain. And this is something that they're planning to add in the future, but unfortunately it wasn't included in the preview release. So how do we fix it? Well, the way I fixed it is using Cloudflare's free account uh, that you can have. You don't need to pay for anything from Cloudflare. And the way this works is you, for me, I have Namecheap as my domain provider. I set up the domain name servers that Cloudflare provides in my uh, domain provider, which uses them instead of the free DNS that my domain provider has. And, and now Cloudflare uses a feature called CNAME flattening, which you can look up. I'll have a link for Cloudflare and the documentation on their CNAME flattening in the description below for you to check out. So go check that out if you're curious. But, um, and I can, if you need to, or if there's any interest in it, I can do a tutorial on this whole process if anybody wants. So in the comment section, let me know if you think I should do a tutorial on the root domain kind of workaround in this instance. But anyway, so it uses the CNAME flattening. There's a couple records which we can have up on the screen here for you to check out. And it forwards anything that goes to my root domain or Apex domain onto my www um, domain. And then there's a page rule that I have configured in Cloudflare that takes any uh, uh, anything extra. So if you went to like the about page in the Apex domain, it's just going to forward you to the about page on the www part. And this all happens transparently to you and you don't see it. So it works out because it's still free. So I'm not, I'm not having to pay for anything. The downside to this though is that there's even a little bit more work that you have to do to get this all working and that's if you're using email forwarding from your domain provider like I was then this is going to be broken because or at least in my case it was broken where Namecheap doesn't allow you to do the email forwarding if they are not your DNS provider. So I had to use two different services because there was a couple recommended options to work around this but one of them is no longer free and this was kind of the recommended path for several years if you look online but that was to use Mailgun. And so Mailgun has a, an ability to send mail for free, but if you wanna receive it for free, or you can no longer receive it for free, you now have to pay like $35 a month for that. That may change at some point, but when I looked it up, that's what it cost. And I didn't wanna pay any money for this. My goal was that I was removing my regular Azure Web App service to Azure Static Web Apps because I wanted to try and get something for free or save a lot of money. So if I was going from paying 45, 50 bucks a month to paying 35 a month, I was saving money, but not nearly as much as I wanted to. So uh, what I found was you can use Mailgun to send mail for free and then use Improve MX to receive or have email forwarding for free. And so when I looked up in different some forums, this was kind of a, a recommended path that you could take. So I'll have some links for all those in the description below for you to check out, but I have all my email forwarding now coming through Improve MX, and then I can send mail through Mailgun, and now I have Cloudflare doing my CNAME flattening so that I don't have to worry about the root domain support. So it all works, and it's free still, but it is, does take some extra work to get set up, so it'll be nice in the future if Azure Static Web Apps can add that root domain support so that I can just kind of get rid of all that extra work and just use my normal domain provider's DNS. Moving on to the last part, which is kind of more of an FYI, not really a con, and I kind of mentioned a little bit about this earlier, and that was from the Deployment Pro that I had mentioned in the beginning, is that the deployment's really easy to set up. Well, the deployment is easy to set up, but again, this is really dependent on how you're building your static web app and where the content or the you know the files that you're going to be server serving are loaded or, or hosted, I guess you could say. And so there is some configuration when you're setting up the deployment where it asks where those artifact files are. And then when it creates that YAML file, it doesn't really, I mean, it can't account for every scenario. So you may be using Next.js like I am, or you may be using Next.js, or you may be just manually building your own static website. And if that's the case, then some, all of those scenarios are probably gonna end up meaning that your content is all built or rendered maybe a little bit differently and for me that static content isn't built until i export which is what nextjs calls it and i think next was the same where you export it and that's what turns all of your page routes into different html files versus just one bundle that's on a single html file which is what you might do with a normal react or view application or angular and in, so in this case 
I had to go through the YAML file and edit that YAML file to actually uh, call the NPM script for generating and exporting the, the right content that we needed for the website because this was not included by default. So you'll need to make sure that that YAML file is set up to run whatever NPM commands you need it to run to either build or transpile or whatever you need it to do to get your content into the right directory that you're telling the YAML file is the right directory for your static content to be served from. So I have an example of that up here on the screen for you to check out so you can kind of see the before and the after of what my YAML file looked like and what I had to do to make it work so that if you're using Next.js like I am, then this will be probably really helpful and easy for you. And I think it's pretty much the same for Next.js. The folder name may be different for it gets exported to. So if you have any questions on this or any challenges, make sure you let me know about them in the comments section below and I'll try and answer any of your questions about this whole process down there. And again, if everybody feels like there's a need for like a big tutorial video, I can do a longer tutorial video that kind of goes over all of this setup if anybody's interested. So let me know in the comment section below or post any questions you have down there and I'll try and answer them there. That's gonna be it for me, but as always, it's not it for you. If you haven't liked yet, make sure you hit that like button because it definitely helps me out. And if you haven't subscribed and you like this video and you wanna know about the future ones, you're gonna need to get those notification bells turned on. So subscribe and hit the bell and I will see you guys in the next one.